did this ourselves. They're coming. It can't be. Where is everyone? Hello, Wastelanders, and welcome back to the Apocalypse Post with your host, me, Makeshift. Today, we're going to be continuing our short series of mayoral debates. Well, I guess it's not really a, de a debate per se. It's more of a get to know your candidates better so that you'll see them in the street when you're trying to uh, off one of them because the Dukes of the Nuke hired you to. Yeah. Anyway, last time we talked to three of the candidates for day mayor, which were Hatter, Red Claw, and Uncle Foster. And today we're going to be talking to the candidates for night mayor. At least some of them. I don't know. There could be lots more out there. I'm trying to catch everyone as they sign up, but who knows? Anyway, I'm going to introduce them to you in just a minute. But before we do that, I have a short message to play for you from the current nightmare Fahrenheit. You see, the nightmare Fahrenheit and the day mayor tag are going to be hosting the elections this year. And they put out some information on, on exactly what the mayor is and how the elections are going to go. So let's hear from one of them right now. Hello, candidates. I'm Mr. Fahrenheit, nightmare of Wasteland City. I'm here on behalf of Makeshift to give you a little bit of an idea of what being the mayor is. The mayor is a focal point for lore. They are a central place and a role where people can come to to integrate in lore, find people to work with. If you're new, become involved, find ways to integrate. If you have questions, go to the mayor. If you need connections, go to the mayor. The mayor is somebody who is deeply in tune with the community, but also very invested in lore. So they're here not just for established tribes, but also brand new people and helping to guide and develop and build ideas. In my time as mayor, I've helped anywhere from generating massive quests to helping people figure out how to write stories. So it's really all about reaching out to the community, building your constituency and helping enable people be the wastelander that they want to be. Now, the election itself. I know there's been some questions and some confusion. On Friday, at the Defenstrate Horde stage at 1 p.m., all candidates for mayor will arrive and in full sight of all attendants, state the case for why they should be the mayor of Wasteland City. There will be an expert panel of judges to help evaluate and provide a little more context that the people will then use to vote. Then, once all speeches are done, off to the mayoral office at the Degenerates Camp, where people will be able to vote until 5 p.m. Show up, get a ballot, write down the name, the one name for mayor, and it will be placed in the box for counting. Now, if you write two names, we will do our best but really just write your mayor. Now, some candidates have had some questions. I won't name any names, Emissary, but if you're running without a day mayor, just keep in mind, the business of the mayor is the business of running the city day to day. So either A, win all on your own and then say that you're the nightmare, or convince the people that they don't need a mayor. I am fine to see which works best. I want all of you to know that regardless of the fact that I'm stepping down as Nightmare and walking away from the desk to bring forth a successor, I am always here for my constituency, the people of this city, and for you, future mayor. You never need worry. Mr. Fahrenheit is always happy to provide insight. All right, so now that we know a little bit about the positions, let's hear from some of your Nightmare candidates. And if you're wondering if Nightmare and Nightmare are the same word, it seems like they are. So, my fellow denizens of Wasteland, you're going to know exactly who to vote for on Friday. At 1 will be the official debates, and the voting will continue up until 5 p.m. that day. And it will be taking place at the Defenestrate Horde. So look for them on the map if you want to get involved. Anyway, let's bring on our Nightmare candidates. First off, he's the voice of the people. Commodore Pistol Whip, welcome to the show. Hello, glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to have you on. Uh, we had Hatter on, your running mate last week, and he was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely man, crushed it. Man. Yeah, your video looks better than his, though, so. Well, gotta show some class, gotta show the Wasteland Talk uh, stage, you know? Yeah, perfect. Thanks for coming on the show. And next up, I'm going to introduce the terrifying those are her words. 
people. Absa fucking lutely darling, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. My wonderful, beautiful, terrible ex-wife. Soon to be ex-wife. <laughs> well, in my mind, it's already a done deal. So you are admitting that we No, are no, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is we were never married. So, oh shit. Well, I can't. Uh, I hope the, I hope like the lawyers X-Works. didn't hear that. Yeah, I, my lawyer is going to hear mm, about my, it. Yeah. I said my next wife, next mm. wife is what I said. Oh, so we're getting married. Yes, but mm. I, yeah, you set it up, pay for the caterers, and I'll see you there. Done. Maybe. Right. <laughs> Just make sure to pay them up You probably should have brought your lawyer on this show. I should have. Yeah. I'm blowing it right now. I need someone whispering in my ear to just stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> anyway, real quick. Yes, I was handed with some uh, some divorce papers at Wasteland last year, and that is some lore that has gotten me so involved in the lore, and I'm absolutely loving it, actually. It was really fun to squirm and try to figure out my way out of this lawsuit, uh, which is still happening. So at Wasteland 2023, just in a few weeks from now, uh, we're going to figure out exactly how this is all going to go down, and it might tie into some other lore. So show up, pay attention, ask questions, and definitely read the paper, because I think we both did interviews, right? I, technically, I had dinner with the paper, but sure, yeah, an interview. Oh, so you wined and dined them in order to get your story published the way you want. I get it. I'm okay. a very nice person. So. All right, well, moving on. Next up, he might just be the wild card of this election. Zero from Rabbit Asylum. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. And um, I, I got to say, this election is looking really good because, yes, the, the the mayors are supposed to like help people into lore. And you guys are all super involved in lore already. This is really cool. That's that is it's the highlight of Wasteland and the more the merrier. I love it. Oh, so good. Um, and you guys have a lot a lot of stuff planned this year, too, right? Um, Always. I mean, I can't stop getting in trouble. I know. I know. I've seen the posts. I know you guys got a lot going on. All right. But I'm not going to put you on the spot. So I'm going to introduce our last candidate for Nightmare, at least the one the, out of the ones we're going to be talking to. Uh, he is the troublemaker, and that name is well earned. He is the Emissary. Welcome. Hi. I'm here. It happened. <laughs> After listening to zero of my instructions on how to log in, Emissary made it. And yes, I'm throwing you into the bus because that just seems to be what we do with you, Emissary. Pretty much, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm here. People just told me, hey, click this link and talk at them. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, and yeah, that, that describes a lot of uh, what you do. Just kind of like show up and talk at people. Yeah, until they don't want to listen anymore and <laughs> give me what I want. <laughs> well, actually, that's a really good platform for running for mayor. So I want to say thank you all for coming on today. We're going to have a really fun uh, uh, nightmare debate, a, a mayor debate. Thank you guys so much for coming on. So I, so I want to talk about what the nightmare is and, and who's got a good idea of what your responsibilities will be if you win this election. I didn't yeah. know I had responsibilities. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Emissary, you, you didn't know that you had responsibilities? I, I still don't know if I have them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe one of the other candidates will clue you in. Who's got it? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, you first. raised your hand, so you're up first. I love that. Thank you. Uh, so I actually started campaigning at uh, Zeke's Nuclear Winner um, after being told by the current nightmare and the very first nightmare uh, what he had done with the position, which is basically you're the mayor but um, you're running the night times. That's the nightlife, the activities. And uh, I think Mr. Fahrenheit and Ms. Mayor have really sort of melded it. So it's basically just two halves of the same coin or two sides of the same coin. But um, you're expected to help people find people. You're expected to help people find ways into the story, ways to make their stories mesh and work together instead of having our own little silos. Um, Cause to me, it's really no fun having a story if you don't also get to tell it to people. Um, making that story is a very small piece of it. Getting to tell it and getting to make that story have meeting with other people is the biggest part. Yeah, That's Wasteland fantastic. It's all about the story. Love it. Yeah, uh, I remember in the early years of Wasteland, we didn't have a whole lot of lore. Uh, it was just kind of like people showed up with their art, with their camps, with their cars, and we all just kind of hung out and talked about, like, you know, I like this post apocalypse movie and that kind of thing. And then we started making up our own stories somewhere along the way, and things just got way more interesting. Um, Commodore. 
Tell me yes. what it. Tell me what the difference is between like wasteland lore and like a, an actual LARP event. So wasteland lore that like continues on forever for me. Like things you still hear about like happened like five years ago, and it's still canon. LARP is like usually for me it's like something that happens just right then and there. So that's interesting. Yeah, because so yeah, like, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, but by all means, please. I was just going to say, uh, you know, I, I, I haven't done any official LARP, and I've said that a few times on this show. It's, I, uh, it might not be my thing, although I love the theater, so it might be. Who knows? Um, yeah. But from what I understand, a lot of LARP events, you're in character the entire time. And one mm-hmm. of the differences with Wasteland LARP light um, <laughs> is you can kind of jump in and out as much as you want, and it doesn't matter. Yep, that that's pr- pretty much true. Yeah, like you can... Role play, or you don't have to role play. You just be yourself or be with amongst the people. And if you want to get involved, get involved. I love that. Now, uh, Zero, um, a lot of the lore at Wasteland happens during the day. It's kind of, it's a little bit quieter. Um, There's a lot less going on, a lot less scheduled events. So we kind of like shove it into the day. But I know that over the years, a lot more has started squeaking into the night. Can you give me some examples of some cool stuff that you've seen happen at night? Well... Um, I know when you don't know what you're doing in the, in the LARP and lore, uh, we rabbit asylum, we raided the juggers camp at night, uh, during the memorial to the fallen jugger. Wait, was that, is that, that's, like, that's still like a lore thing, right? That's not a real world, like memorial, right? No, that was a real world memorial. Oh, oh, how'd that go? For the create, for the, I, I believe it was the, the, the guy that started the juggers. They rolled oh. amazing with it. We all felt like asses because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> what I was told was there was a bounty on on the army of L.A. Uh-huh. And we got a bunch of money for a little guy. I was like, well, let's go take the head of the snake. That's got to be worth a lot. <laughs> I have a question for, I have a question for Zero right now. After hearing Yeah, that. go ahead. Uh, has anyone ever told you you have great timing? <laughs> uh, they, they were lying. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, that is. You will see fuck shit up patches around the wasteland. That is the base of what that patch started over. Was oh, us, Black it. Ash Syndicate, uh, some guys from Tent City. Um, you know, because it, it was a, a collection of people who wanted to play, and we didn't know what the hell we were doing, so we just did some shit. Because I, I make, I have ideas and I don't really think them out very far. You're kind of like the the new school David Dufour. Do you know that guy? <laughs> yeah, you're. Which could time be I've been a told fab- that. I was gonna say that could be a fabulous compliment, depending on your opinion of Wade Rush. Yeah, um, like the best compliment, the worst insult, insult you can get. Talk. That that <laughs> is. One of the greatest compliments I have ever been given, <laughs> like in my opinion. You yeah, because one of one of Dave's favorite lines is, "I don't break the rules; I make the rules." Because he was always <laughs> he was always pushing the envelope a little bit, and yeah, a lot of the stuff that he did, uh, we made rules about it. Like you can't <laughs> you can't tow someone behind your four by four through Wasteland City with someone being dragged behind it on a tire. That's a Dave Dufour. Um, <laughs> it's a very specific rule for a very specific occurrence. <laughs> you know, you, you always got to find the loophole. Yeah. All right. So emissary, as uh, as someone with a name like emissary, does it make sense that you will be you, if elected, will become an emissary for lore throughout the wasteland? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I've I've already been a big part of it throughout the years, just uh, kind of as the um, as the villain of the wasteland uh, where my plans always fall through and fail miserably um, because someone's got to be the loser in lore. Um, and why not, why not have it be me? I love that. And honestly, one of the things that I've kind of come to realize with my own lore is I've been doing this for 10 years. Well, I've only gotten into lore in the last like five or six. Um, but one thing I, I did realize is I don't need to win. And it's actually really fun to let other people win and like be the yeah. heel, be the butt of the joke. Um, let someone get a victory over you um, because you're showing them a really good time. And because, you know, you're kind of like choosing to not be super competitive with it, uh, you get the win too. So I think that's really cool. 
yeah, it was it, uh, like years ago, it was kind of like everyone wanted to be the winner. Everyone wanted to be the badass wasteland, Lord of the Wastes. Like, it was like, well, somebody's got to be the loser. Not everyone's the like, you know, you, you got to have someone lose. And it's like, it's been fun to play that part. Yeah. And I've seen cheers a lot of the the, loser. Yes. Cheers to the losers. Loser. <laughs> cheers. Um, yeah, and and I realized it was actually Undertown. So props to you guys that have been in Undertown, uh, one of you, um, because it was actually the Baron and Critical Bigs that taught me the art of losing. Like uh, the Baron will challenge anybody to Moncala anytime. Uh, it's just so happens he sucks at Moncala, so that's like his get one over on the Baron routines. Um, uh, with with uh, Critical Bigs, he was helping to run the. Um, the, the hunt help me out here darling bounty hunting it's going to be bounty a tortuga hunt. trading company know. this year yeah i'm really excited you guys are really keeping that now. going too yeah yeah but um, um we but also yeah. have the slammer which is why bounty hunting oh, is there so that's bring them in alive nice and move. throw them in the slammer hell yeah yeah but uh one of the great things critical taught me is uh if you make yourself a large bounty be ready to get captured and make that capture big because I saw crowds show up to capture Biggs and he would just be like, all right, everyone pull out your guns. And if you don't have a gun, pull out your fingers. And on three, you're all going to fire and I'm going to die. And then that's exactly what happened. And he would take every hit. He'd get hit by 57 bullets and then he'd fall to the ground and then hop up and congratulate every single one of them for capturing critical Biggs. I just thought that was really cool. Um, all right. So let's move on. I'm going to. All right. So we're going to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the lore here. So now that we kind of get an idea of what this nightmare ship is, I want you guys to all introduce yourselves, the tribes you represent, and if you have a ward, uh, mention that as well. I want you to talk about your platform, like what you're running for, uh, what your plan is if you if you win. Tell me about your running mate, and uh, if you have any lore behind your candidacy, I want you to share that as well. So I know I asked for a lot, so go, go as far as you can, and I'll fill in the questions if you don't make it all the way through, but uh, absolutely, fucking lutely darling. Why don't you go first? All right, then. Uh, so I am absolutely fucking Lily Darling of Undertown. Um, I represent Tortuga Trading Company this year. I was previously with the Rust Devils, who sadly were raided and will not be coming back. Um, and I really love telling other people's stories. Uh, my story is never that much more interesting to me. I already know my story, so I don't need to do that. Um, but helping people make the jump from, I had this cool idea, I don't really know, maybe it's that fun, to enacting it, to feeling confident. Um, that's my favorite thing, is just knowing that I pushed them that little bit that they needed to make that happen, to, to really jump. Um, my platform, I guess, is mostly accessibility and community. Uh, Accessibility, I feel like, is the thing that was lacking my very first year, 2019, which is that the lore was things that happened to other people. Um, and I, I didn't get it, honestly. Uh, and it took, um, I, I had to write spam mail for the WCC. That's my, like, lore origin story, is I needed to write spam mail. They were out of mail. They had couriers standing in a line just desperate to take things to people. And they As were like, most just post office workers are. Yes, just desperate to do more work, right? That's how the post office works. <laughs> and uh, one of my one of my good long term friends, Disunito, had said that he uh, had been challenged by Biggs to get the most amount of people to sing "I'm a Little Teapot" at Rust Devils camp. And he told this to me, and he was like, "So if you know anybody who will go and sing "I'm a Little Teapot," and I was like, "I know." 40 couriers standing outside and I got a lot of paper. So uh, by person 45, um, three people in Rust Devils camp had cried. Uh, they had sent mail back to the post office saying, whoever's doing this, you tell us right now. And, <laughs> Wait, uh, so you were, were you sending letters to people and then the receiver of that letter got instructions to go sing I'm a little yes, teapot? Yes, and <laughs> some of them were told to bring extras or buddies. Half oh of them God. were told that Rust Devils would pay them in Coyote Canyon bucks for this privilege. So it actually got to the point that uh, Biggs and the rest of the Rust Devils were standing at the front of camp handing people cash to not sing. They were oh like, are you God. here to sing to us? No, you're going to take this and you're going to go. Thank you. You've done your due diligence. I love it. And uh, 
somebody came in later and was like, oh my gosh, guys, the funniest thing is happening at Rust Devils camp and told that story. And it didn't matter that my name wasn't attached to it. Um, a whole bunch of people had gone and done this ridiculous thing and had a blast. And uh, I was invited to join the Rust Devils because of that. And I also got the title of Teapot Terrorist. Um, oh, I like that. Yes. And uh, that was because I didn't care about becoming a Teapot Terrorist, but my best friend of 20 years really wanted to win this thing with Biggs and him winning that was the best part of that. Um, although now sending people to sing, I'm a little teapot is still a mission that I'll do. If people are like, I just need a thing. I'll find someone that's really annoyed me and I'll be like, here's what you're going to do. I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right. So who are you running with? I am running with Prince Redclaw of the Skullduggers on the Undertown ticket. I absolutely love it. All right. Um, I think we got all the questions in there, right? Probably. Yeah, good enough. Here we go. All right, Zero, you're on the top left of my screen, so I'm going to have you up next. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell me a little bit about your platform. All right, I'm Zero. I am the head of Rabbit Asylum. Um, we are a lot of times the heel, but usually with a point. <laughs> Some <laughs> princi underlining principle. Nice. Um, I am running with Foster. Uh, we, our biggest thing right now is unity. Uh, I told you guys a little bit about the massive way that we did everything wrong. Um, that was the short version of it. Um, <laughs> but um, ever since then, we have wanted everybody to be a feel feel a part of, and. This year, we're, we're trying to do more than just the cities. Um, we are trying to get Tent City. The big thing has always been at the gathering that the city is big and high and mighty. And, you know, Tent City feels left out. But we're right. all there together. Yeah. We're all doing things together. Uh, when I took Foster hostage last year... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, well, I'm just going to throw it out there before it can be thrown. Nice. Uh, so we we broke the wasteland record for the, for the largest battle in wasteland history. Was that um, was did uh, Casper of the WCC happen to take note because he does a lot of the record keeping? Yes, that's actually who told us. Oh, fantastic! I love it. Yeah, we just we were just trying to get as many people involved in something at once and we all love foster we all love foster mm -hmm. so um i mean if me and foster can bury the hatchet you know what i mean we we can do a lot for everyone else too <laughs> um that... we're actually talking about getting some of tent city involved with the mayor mayoral stuff uh -huh. because they don't seem to feel like they have a voice and that's not okay yeah it's interesting because um obviously there's a large draw into the city for everyone to get there there's lights there's music there's sound um and that does seem to be where everyone congregates now if you guys don't know wasteland is set up very interesting if you're looking at a map i'm gonna try to do this backwards uh, i actually have a map back there but it's i can't do it right <laughs> now um you've got wasteland city over here and then here is the gates and then the next uh, maybe quarter. So that's about a quarter of the event. The next quarter is give or take the, it's the theme zone. So that is still placed wasteland city tribes. They just happen to be outside the city gates. And then about half of the event size wise is general camping or tent city where you don't have to be in theme. You can car camp if you want, you can pull up in your Coleman or your RV um, and you don't have to be themed there. And so, yeah, uh, I think the city has come to mean more the city and the theme zone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. It is, there is still a bit of a difference, you know, because when you're in the theme zone, you don't see modern cars, you don't see Coleman tents, it's all themed. Um, and so there is a little bit of clout that comes with that, but um, none of those tribes are trying to take anything away from your wasteland experience if you're in Tent City. Um, so you're still welcome to come and party and play with yes. us. And there's still yeah. amazing tribes that are themed out there too. Some of the best mercs come from out there. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. And actually, that's one of the first steps to becoming a placed tribe is if you can build your your camp the way you imagine it in the in a placed theme zone, make sure you get good pictures of it, because that's going to be part of your application to be a placed tribe the next year. So 
yeah, sometimes you can get those pictures in, you know, during the off season and be placed the next year. But it really helps if you set up out in Tent City the first time and show, hey, this is what we can do. And it makes it a lot easier to place you for the next year. All right. So without uh, all the boring clerical stuff, let's move on. Now, Commodore, um, unlike Zero, you've known your running mate for quite a bit. So why don't you introduce yourself uh, and you and your platform? All right. One more. <laughs> oh, this again? All right. If you insist. Yeah. yeah Commodore oh, can't speak without having <laughs> a, a nice more. long chug from Das Boot. So, hello. I am the Commodore. The tribe I am with is the Ghoul Crest Hunting Club. And also, I am the co-host of Wasteland Talk with my running mate, the Hatter of the Wasteland. Platform. You know, doesn't matter who you pick for the nightmare. You can get fucked either way. <laughs> but at least with me, I provide the lube. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. But in all seriousness, no, um... We're here for the the people rep also representing Tent City. We want to get the new Wastelanders out there to start where they can go Wasteland because you can't do everything in Wasteland City, but we can point you in the right direction where you can have a good time. I love it. And Ghoulcrest um, has been in many different places over the years. It started out in Tent Gosh. City, then ended up in Undertown, then ended up in the slums. I, mm -hmm. I think was that the year of the slums I yeah mean, i want to say it, the, it's were... first year there was the first year we called it the slums oh yeah it was like bum fuck in the back <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah next to zero in <laughs> <That's laughs> your slum, your wasteland slum lord <laughs> um and which I, now my ward that represent sorry i forgot that oh no worries <laughs> oh that's right that's right yeah <laughs> Uh, Zero and Rabbit Asylum are placed in the slums. We talked we talked to uh, Foster about that as well because he's also in the slums, which is great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Goldcrest has been um, out in Tent City again, um, kind of creating this bit of a, a mystery, the, this oasis in the desert kind of a vibe. Um, so would you say that that kind of adds to your clout of bringing Tent City into the Wasteland City? Oh, yeah. Basically, I say this. Goldcrest, we're pretty much uh, Wasteland City material, but we're the Wasteland uh, Tent City environment. Where, again, we're that oasis to where, like, when you want to steer clear from the bigness of Wasteland City and you see the bright lights in it, upon Tent City, that's us. Where you can go and, in and enjoy yourself if you're a tribe member, if you're a club member, club member. Right. Uh, but, that's but not unity, are, my friend. Yeah. Are you guys still accepting applications? Because I know that the line to get in has been quite long. Oh, yeah. Um the ways of earning your tie have been very different over the years. Um, back in uh, the majority of the years of Google Crest, we used to uh, be like a type of way of people doing bounty hunting with uh, Rust Devils. And basically they'll tell their bounty story at Google Crest, but they can't just like, oh, I ran to him over here, we rochambeaued, and I won. No, no, you have to do like the big fish tail, like, so there I was kind of thing. Yeah. And so what is it now? Hold on one moment. <laughs> Too much dust boot, my friend. Oh, what uh, what are your criteria for membership now? So basically, I'm not in liberty to say. <laughs> but basically, so what you're trying you to just... say is it, it's an exclusive club. No one can get in unless you already have your tie. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, you can still get in. Honestly, I have to say you have to be at the right place at the right time and do the right thing. So it's an exclusive club that you can't get in, is what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But it's, but it's for the people. But it's for the people. I don't know, <laughs> Commodore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little X next to your name on my, uh, on my voting. Uh, that's not that I'm voting for you. It's that I'm putting an X there so I don't vote there. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a chance to earn it back. Don't you worry. All right, Emissary, same question. Hi. Why don't you introduce yourself, the tribe you represent, and uh, tell us a little bit about your platform. Uh, so I'm the Emissary. Um, I don't really have a tribe. I kind of just wander around, do my own thing, talk with everyone, be a part of random things. Um, and that's that's kind of uh, why I think I'd be a good nightmare. Uh, I just am good at talking to people and know a lot of people. Uh, you know, someone brings their friend who it's their first year and they're like, hey, I don't know. Um, like, they don't know what they want to do. They, they have this idea. 
um, can you point them in the right direction of like, oh, they want to do bounty hunting or they want to uh, do gun running or mail or like, you know, courier stuff. Like, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, go to this person, go, go here. Like they'll, they'll help you out. Um, and so I, I think that's, uh, that's what, you know, we're looking for here. Um, I think, you know, that'd be a, um, pretty much right up my alley. Um, so that's why I showed up here, uh, not knowing what I was about to do. Well, that's fantastic. And there, is there a reason you ended up choosing Nightmare instead of Daymare? Because um, you don't have a running mate, so it's not like you were forced oh, into one yeah. or the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't have a running mate. Uh, but the, the reason for that is because uh, the day is evil. Um, I, am, I am not alive during the day. I do have a day emissary. Uh, she is solar powered, so she just, you know, is able to be out there and do things in the sunlight while I am uh, stealing someone's shade and dying. I don't know if I've met the day emissary yet, but uh, you, you I have should. it's digits. It's who? Digits from Schofield Drifters. It's digits. Yeah, Wait, I didn't know that. That's Schofields. A... Yeah. Well, it's I'm gonna have a. It's I know. Of. I need to have a dis. Wait, is it not yeah. Schofield's digits? Yes, it is Schofield's digits. Seems to be a lot of digits. They out are there. one and the same. All right, digits. Yeah. Name her. Her. Uh, I always say it like the Game of Thrones name is like Day Emissary and Queen Digits of, of Schofield's Drifters. It just goes on like all your titles yeah, exactly. one after another. Yeah. So many titles. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we just uh, came up with that a uh, few years back. Never really did anything with that. It was kind of just a dumb inside joke, but. Uh, uh, yeah, she's the one who does things during the day, and I do not at all. I got gotcha. you. Well, fantastic. Um, so I have another question for you, which is, um, as someone that doesn't quite yet have a running mate, there are two other uh, day mayors that don't have running mates. One of them is Lieutenant Jax, the governor of Tent City and of the Unfound Collective. The other one is Furiosa Puppet. Do one of them sound uh, like they would make a better running mate for you? Um, well, I, I currently already have a, a puppet. Uh, you can't see it because I don't have my camera on, but this is Garth Viserry, Um and he is, uh, he is already a puppet, so I can't really, I, I don't think I can run with another puppet. I, he would get jealous. So maybe Lieutenant Jax, if you're out there, bud, uh, you might have a running mate going. I don't know. Furiosa yeah, Puppet, it seems like you're on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I... But also, like, aren't we voting, um, you know, individually, or is it all like as? Um, like, I don't know. This is the yeah, first year so, there's been running mates, so, so it seems so, yeah. like it might be the appropriate way to go. Yeah, like if we're voting individually. I don't really need a running mate, but like, you know, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. I'm sure someone will come along. Uh, I yeah. can force digits into it. That might be a thing. There might be a conflict of interest there, but we'll figure that out later. Yeah. Um, but uh, but also, yeah, it's up to Tag and Fahrenheit. They can kind of make up the rules since they are the current uh, mayor and nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see what they come up with. The Love Bombs provide top-notch outcomes for the most discriminating clients all across the wasteland. When you need executive escort and protection, intelligence analysis, direct action, or other specialized solutions, the Love Bombs provide a bespoke option tailored directly to your needs. Listen to this heartfelt testimonial from one of the Love Bombs' satisfied clients. I hired the Love Bombs to save my precious pookie pie from them their scabs over yonder. They was fixing to turn his poor hide into jerky. Woo! <laughs> I reckon not a one of those bastards will walk away from this scuffle. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I reckon I ain't ever seen a gun that big. The love bombs will give your enemies a lick and they won't soon forget. Yes, the love bombs. They're polite, professional, and have a plan to kill everyone they meet. The Love Bombs provide complete confidentiality in their free initial consultation. That's right, the initial consultation is absolutely free. Remember, the Love Bombs, artillery available. Do you crave a place with shade, glorious ceiling fans, and maybe some musical ambiance? A cup of coffee, reminiscent of the old world, in your hands as wastelanders croon away the hot afternoon sun. 
Forlorn Hope is the home your heart has hoped for. We now present to you the Acoustic Cafe Open Mic, Thursday to Saturday at 2.30 to 4 p.m. Hosted by Show Pony, Makeshift, and Feather Edge. Bring an instrument and book your slot today to play at the Acoustic Coffee Cafe. Music, shade, ceiling fans, sing to us and we'll fill your cup. But for right now, let's move into some citizen questions. I want to keep things moving along um, because a lot of the denizens of Wasteland City have sent in some very important questions for all of you. Um, and I'm going to ask a question to one of you at a time and then offer you guys uh, a chance at rebuttal. Uh, don't feel like you got to wait your turn. Just start talking and whoever talks the loudest gets to talk first. Um, but uh, I'm going to kind of go uh, in a circle as much as I can. I think that's pretty much how it's going to go. Anyway, let's get to it because I got a lot of questions to go through. So Commodore Pistol Whip, the first one's going to be for you. All and right. uh, this one has some real world connotations here, but I thought it was funny. So I'm going to ask okay. it anyway. How right. will you make the den great again? The den great again. Reverse the entryways. What? This is bullshit. That is making the assumption that the den is not great already. <laughs> 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 There's entryways. I've just been climbing walls. Yeah, because trust me, like me, um, I DJ a lot in the wasteland, and I tend to DJ in the den quite often. But the thing is, the thing I noticed when was making the den kite not great was that everyone has their stuff pointed outside of the den. There's no interaction inside the den. So if they reverse their entries, we'll have interaction. That's a really interesting point because uh, I remember the the first couple years of the den, it the the the, uh, the courtyard was a lot more prominent. Yeah. Um, and so whether you were on the inside or outside, uh, tribes had entrances to both, um, and the in, inside courtyard was actually an amazing spot to hang. There was so oh, much yeah, going it was on. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's gotten a little bit smaller in the courtyard the last couple of years. So that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. then people piss on piss rock right in front of you. But I did agree <laughs> with the the setup. I mean, I guess last I think last year they did uh put a porto over the piss rock, so now you have a little bit of privacy now. Which for uh, those yeah. who have stage fright, it's great. Well, right, right, right. It's it's, it's very encouraging. <laughs> I love the joke of piss rock, but I so do not love the piss rock. <laughs> I may or um, may not have contributed to a couple of times. I understand. <laughs> All right. So uh, next question is going to be for Zero. Do you reside in a ward? And if so, which one? And how will you represent the wards that are not yours? Uh, and I'm sorry. The first question came from Lone Star of the Fallen. Uh, and this question came from Trail Boss Photon of the Air Raid Sirens and our current sheriff. Well, Miss Sheriff, or Sheriff, should I say? I, I don't know. Uh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> Sheriff. Yeah. Um, I am, the as, as many know, I am the current Wasteland Slumlord. Uh, so I'm out of the slums. Um, and as I've kind of touched on, I'm not trying to represent just wards. We are all there together. People travel from around the world to the gathering. Uh, let's not just pin down one one person one spot one group it's everyone yeah and we even have a new ward coming in this year because we've had undertown for quite a while uh way back in the day um commodore your running mate hatter uh camped with what was it apoc uh what were they called no carton kids thing uh, was. i'll, no, I'll no come up with it kids yeah. no and no there's no. like the the rising sun people uh and then what there was, they? was Japan. Japan. yeah yeah Hey, makeshift jumping in here real quick. It was called APOC Nation. Anyway, I'll come up with it. And might Sounds be like just I have a question for Hatter. Um, yeah, Hatter, are you in the room? He is not. <laughs> oh, he's not? Okay, leave him alone then. Um, uh, there is the green place. There's mm -hmm. the, the slums, of course. And um, absolutely, darling, up across the street from you guys. Like, the fringe. Uh, thank you. Do you know anything yeah. about them yet? I know that it is the same, roughly the same group of tribes that were there last year. They have just formed a coalition to come together and be the fringe. So Simoda, Restorationists, uh, the Wasted Saints, the Northern Trade Federation. I'm missing a few, but but those ones are definitely included. And they have just recently 
banded together to more accurately represent their little slice of wasteland. And do you know what the fringe is going to be like? And the green place is a lot of makers, a lot of like uh, women's tribes, a lot of peacekeeping kind of tribes. What is the fringe going to be? Uh, the fringe has some similar themes in the sense of the, the peacekeeping and really the artists, um, but much less of the Volvolini side of the storyline okay. um, and a very much religious and ritual overtones. I mean, that makes sense. Moda and uh, restoration. Oh, I'm missing the there's another one that does the altars. And I'll think of their names soon. Um, but very oh, religious yeah. ritual, which that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so kind of, um, yeah, non-conforming religions. That's really fun. Yeah. And I, I really love, uh, religions at Wasteland. There's so many of them. There's lots of gods. There's lots of, uh, um, cults to join. Um, just so you guys know, they're all really harmless and just kind of participate as you want or love. Um, and, uh, absolutely darling. Do you want to talk about your ritual that you're doing this year? I would love to, but aren't you going to ask me a question about Moonburn? Oh, I am actually that's up next. So, this is perfect. Oh, my God. It does hey, work abs- out really great. Thank you. Hey, absolutely, fucking lutely darling, as one of our fair-skinned um, <clears throat> nightmare potentials, uh, I'm going to ask you this question, totally unprompted totally. <laughs> and unplanned. Not really if you're elected all. as nightmare, what will you do to help prevent moon burn among wasteland citizens? I very much appreciate being asked this question because as a half redhead, uh, it is very near and dear to my heart. Um, Obviously, the day star is terrible. It is one of the reasons that I would prefer to be nightmare rather than daymare. Um, But even so, moonburn is a significant issue for those of us with some complexions. And uh, my plan this year is to, for the second time at Wasteland, host the Witch's Walk, which is a Wednesday as naked as you want to be, uh, howl and I guess howl along through the wastes. Um, it is called the Witch's Walk. It is not in any way specifically pagan or denominational. It's just us celebrating our bodies. And the hope is that we are also offering up our expanses of skin as sort of an offering to the moon to maybe like tone it down for the rest of the week so that we can go out and have our nighttime activities without the fear of the, uh, the moon's wrath. I oh yeah. my god that was a perfect next question for you <clears throat> thanks i chose this. um hey d- i I've, I've been forgetting to offer up rebuttals uh any of you other candidates do you have uh, any other ideas to prevent moonburn uh i i would suggest Big. sunscreen but that's completely opposite so like they're moon screen moon screen Moon screen. Yeah. moon screen. Moon screen. Moon screen. Like, okay. Can... Yeah, we're going to go with moon screen. Yeah, All gonna... right, Emissary. This next... EF 1000. <laughs> <laughs> Emissary, this question is for you, and it comes from Z of the Seven Sisters. As Nightmare, what would you do to ensure there's no shortage of Malort served throughout the city? You you would you would give me this question. Oh, yeah. You, I picked a couple of doozies yeah, yeah, for you. you. Yeah, you just... Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, have a, I have a good relationship with uh, whiskey business of the Radstag Saloon. Uh, so he keeps me uh, stocked full of Malort. Uh, we even have a special Malort drink at the Radstag called the Hot Scott Toddy. Um, Scott Todd is my real world name, um, where it is Malort and pumpkin spice creamer that has been sitting in the sun all day and oh, then no. you know mixed together and served to you. Um, it is absolutely awful. Um, I don't know how this happened, but I ended up trading it for something worse, uh, which is Baiju. And that, that didn't end well. But yeah, I can, I can keep the wasteland supplied Malort, mostly because I don't want any of it. Uh, I don't know if you saw all of our faces just then, but we all had the exact same face on. And it, yeah. I, I, think, I think Commodore almost puked in his mouth twice. On contrary, I puked in my stomach. So basically, <laughs> so far, me and Whiskey from uh, Rad Rats are one of the few people who actually love Malort. I like Malort. Um, so this, I don't know if I love Malort, this but is I like very Malort. Lovely, what uh, he just described. Oh no! Um, yeah, also, that's right. Uh, you guys the, kill the Malort at Rabbit Asylum all the time. The, oh, it, it's uh, such a delicacy. The, the person I'm, I'm currently seeing, uh, she is making mini Malort bottle keychains. Um, so if you, you want one of those, 
find me. I'll direct you to her. We have a lot of alert to give. Oh Can my I Lord. have one as like a defensive mechanism? Like you throw it at someone if you are being chased can, or like hunted? I, that seems yeah. like really reasonable. You if that's what you're asking. I, I think I, I uh, might barter for that. It would work better in Deathclaw spray. Yeah. Oh my god. You fight the Molotov. All right. All right, I got to move on from this one because it is just getting <laughs> okay, worse and okay. worse. All right, so um, Commodore, this one's from you and it comes from Wendell. How do you improve, how would you improve relations with the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla? Or would you indeed just walk away? Hmm. I would say depending on what the deal is. Well, he wants the guzzling, the women, and uh, the refining capabilities, I believe. He's only wanted one thing ever, which is those Everything. three things. Yeah. Hmm. That's only one thing. <laughs> Math. I mean, man seems like a good person of his word, but I think I'd rather keep that, all that stuff for <laughs> people of the wasteland. <laughs> and I won't walk away. Me and the people will walk away. With the people. With the people. Um, uh, Absolutely, darling. Zero, would you guys uh, think about fighting back, perhaps? We'll do what, the, what we need to do to for everything to be okay for everyone. <laughs> like, there's got to be neutral ground, of course. <laughs> yeah, does, does, like, does there's the no monopoly Ayatollah, bullshit here. <laughs> does the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla accept Reese's pieces as payment? No, no, he might. Oh, I mean, you can like risk a, that a, all you really want. Good. He might they're accept really a good. slave boy. Uh, if, if you're offering up, a offering don't... <laughs> yeah. Man, I feel yeah. like we may have gone a little bit too deep in the actual Mad Max uh, lore for you guys on that one, so I'm going to move on again. Uh... Can I Can I get like two seconds? <laughs> yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it. Cool. No. We are not things, and I do not negotiate. So I'm going to say that I ran a bounty hunting tribe for two years and a very well-to-do barter tribe this year, and I really don't feel like losing a damn cent of it. So. Absolutely, fucking lutely darling. I feel like Fair. you're the only one who got that question right. All right, zero. This one also comes from Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> and then she celebrated so hard that she broke her camera. Uh, zero. This one also comes from Wendell. What is your current guzzoline policy? And that's where it leaves off. So I don't, I don't know what they're leading to here, but you get to figure it out. Don't guzzle on an empty stomach. Yeah. Actually, did you hear the episode where I did uh, Wastelander stories with Chops Bailey? He talked about he talked about being um, on cleanup crew after Wasteland a long time ago. And somehow a um, a Gatorade bottle that was not full of Gatorade, it was full of gasoline, ended up in the cooler that they were using to pass out to all the workers. And he was so hot and so thirsty, he grabbed it, opened it up and took a big swig of gasoline. Oh, that's, uh, um, well, that may or may not be why I hate extra dry drin. Same fucking thing, but it was Fourth of July. Have Have you tried his five loco? Um, because it's basically gasoline. I, I think it's actually worse than gasoline. Oh God. Yeah. As far as I mean, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say I um. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, suck the gasoline out of a tank one time, and just the fumes had me like gagging for an hour. So I can't imagine what a mouthful of it would taste like. Yeah. No. Official gasoline policy: fair trade for everyone. Fair trade for everyone. That's fair. Does anyone have a rebuttal? Hmm. Better not. <laughs> just fair. Everyone's everyone's on board with fair trade I'm for gasoline. I'm the king of yeah. kidnapping. Don't fucking rebuttal me. <laughs> I've never had a I've never had a vehicle. I've just walked, so I don't usually use guzzling but so yeah more for everyone else I love it. <laughs> all right so uh this one actually kind of goes back to another question we just had but gemini of samoda wants to know how many shots of malort is enough and um i'm actually going to offer this to everybody if you could just put a hand up with how many shots of malort is enough everyone together absolutely darling says zero hold on, no, commodore hold on, says no, 10 hold on, hold at hold least on, 10 I'm, sorry, I only have ten fingers. I'm holding up a zero as well. Me and Dar absolutely darling held up our hands at the same time. Perfect. All right. Uh, oh, zero, you ready? This is an easy no. one. What no. are you doing over there? Are you making a <laughs> shot of Malort right now? Please say yes. No. Oh, he's he's, oh, he's writing, writing. He's writing down something. Oh, yeah, he's right. writing it down. You know what? I'm going to allow this. Um, 
I don't know what's going to happen, but he I say it's says... say it's fair. It's fair. 10? Negative 10. Negative 10. Oh, yeah, I guess you can't do negative 10 with your fingers. I'm going to say yeah. one, one to two shots of Malort is plenty enough. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's enough of Malort. I'm going to cancel any other Malort questions that come up. Um, um, emissary, this one's also from Gemini of Simoda. How many licks? Oh, God. How many licks? Does, <laughs> how many licks does it take to get to the center of Piss Rock? <laughs> I, I will never find that answer. Uh, the world may never know. Um, <laughs> I hope the world may never know. <laughs> I, I, I feel like someone is going to find out that answer, and I hope I never meet that person. Oh, God. I guess, uh, uh don't kink shame? Uh, in uh, that yeah. case, I yeah, will. Yeah, good answer. Good yeah. answer. <laughs> uh, and that, th both of those questions came from Gemini, who is like one of the sweetest humans on Earth. Oh, um, I'm, so, uh, so I gotta I'm say, I'm, the, I'm pretty uh, impressed with her crassness on these. Yeah, part of the skirts with her. She's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Zero. This next question uh -oh. comes from Volfi, uh, who is going to be a first year this year. Uh, and really excited to have Volfi on site. You're going to have the time of your life. Don't you worry. But uh, <laughs> we all know dirt is the preferred method to stop a wound from bleeding. I don't know if that's true, but it definitely is at Wasteland. What else would you recommend we use dirt for? Uh, thickening soup. Throwing in your enemy's eyes. Um theming because more dirt more dirt more dirt <laughs> very nice um i mean this this list goes on it could weigh down things it can be made in the mud which you can throw at your enemies again um you could bury you can dig down and get cool if you go down two feet this is a trick from living in the mojave desert <laughs> it does get uh, really cool once you get below that top layer Yes, it's about two feet roughly from the top. So, yeah. Uh, Does anyone else have a suggestion for dirt that'll top any uh, any oh, of yeah. zero's suggestions there? Pretty much as zero says, needs more dirt. But also, <laughs> dirt can also be your enemy, as we all experience the W. Yeah. 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 Dirt is for like um, getting in so your don't eyes piss to off sand the dirt, blast. Don't piss off the W. <laughs> and never say the W's real name. Yeah. I mean, you can also eat the dirt. I mean, we all do um, throughout they, the event, but like you can you can just eat it straight up. It's it's not that bad. Here's it's the thing: if, iron. if someone it. offers you some of the chili they've been cooking for several hours on an open fire pit, um, don't chew all the way. Like chew ninety percent of the way and stop because there is dirt in that stew. <laughs> I, uh, you know what though, I, when I was at the Dukes and I had the dirt stew, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> I wasn't saying our stew, but it, I've had, it I, I've had. It was stew. definitely our stew. Does the, the body Dukes. good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was actually a chilly one year, and we just happened to cook it, you know, during just enough wind. And that year we had our. Is that what pot, it was? Like, on the ground. W. It wasn't. It wasn't the year you were there. It was a long time ago. That I, I just was remember. Like, I, I'm gonna break my first it year. My first year, oh, yeah. I came totally unknowing and i ran out of food even and the fucking dukes <laughs> took care of me well good i'm glad i'm glad to hear that because i probably wasn't there that's kind of the joke around the dukes camp because i'm never there <laughs> no, right. that's, i will forever love you guys for that I, this I like next question you're never there and i always am yeah that's true you, you should be a duke and i should be the emissary yeah. um <laughs> All right. This next question comes from Odd Wastelander, uh, and it is for absolutely darling. If I'm new to town and this is my first year in the wastes, why should I vote for you? Ooh. Um, I would say that I know everyone. I will talk to everyone. And my very favorite thing is to make sure that people have a good time. Um, uh, it's a little bit. I guess to me, it's hard to have a bad time at Wasteland, excepting, of course, the W and uh, some other environmental concerns. Um, but I know that I've heard of people's first Wastelands just not just being rough. You know, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. And um, I think my my vote would secure a very loud campaign for how we change that and how we change everybody's Wasteland to be a little bit more community-based we're building a city out in the desert we should all 
be good citizens. I love it. And this kind of feels like a question that I should let all of you answer. So Zero, give me the short answer. Why should why should a first year uh, vote for you? Why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a that really is a short answer. answer. Uh, I'm going to accept it. Commodore, why should we vote for you? I will show you the way. Perfect. I will show you the way. <laughs> Zero's changing tactics. <laughs> uh, emissary, why should someone there for the first time vote for you? Uh, because I, uh, I, I'm funny, I guess. Like just, just you know, come, come and crack a joke at me. I'll try to crack one back. I'm not good at wit on the spot. This is really bad for me. You did great when we roasted you, though. You were right on. Oh it. yeah, that was that was, that was awesome. That was we amazing. heard the howls all the way across the street. There was not a quiet space in the back of our camp because of that roast. Yeah, You're welcome. I love it. Oh, that was so much fun. Um, yeah, it all was. Right, I'm, I'm going to kind of push forward because we are running a little bit behind. So I'm going to jump a couple questions here. Uh, James wants to know. And this one's for Emissary. How many caps is it going to take to uh, grease the wheels, if you know what I mean? Uh, well, caps don't make very good grease. Uh, they they kind of get stuck in things a lot, so um, I wouldn't I wouldn't use them. Smart. No. Smart. The very yeah. very little answer. Um, any rebuttals for that? Does anyone have a number that they would accept to? Uh, I accept sway? the number. Yes. There is a num. Oh, there is a. The number is yes. The number, the is, number yes. is yes. All right, Commodore can be bought. Absolutely, darling. Can you be bought? Um, I don't think I need to be bought. I'm uh, I'm pretty rolling in it as it is, as far as wasteland <laughs> currency goes. Uh, I'm about to have 75 percent of your camp, even. So, jeez. Um, I we'll feel see like how that goes. Money or caps is not really the way to my heart. I feel like and good acts of service. I got a lot of things to deliver. I got a lot of people to annoy. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to remind you, you didn't say my camp in the uh, divorce notice. You did say of your stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just wait to see how I play with that. Yeah, uh, great. Zero. Um, I will. Zero, can you be bought? Fuck no. <laughs> I'm paying so, so many people out to get the shit that I want accomplished done. And and we all know how fucking busy I am with getting stuff, doing stuff, and getting shit done. I get it done. Sometimes it doesn't play play out afterwards, but I get shit done. Uh, I pay so much shit out already. I I I don't really, you know what I mean. I'll grease your caps. Sounded like a threat. Zero's getting feisty. I like it. <laughs> All right, I got one more question for each of you coming up. So we're gonna start with Commodore. Right. Um, this one comes from. Oh, I lost my spot. I I've been working off this sheet. I've been editing the hell out of it, moving things around, and I just lost who asked this question. So if it's you, I'm sorry, but uh, it's a great question. Uh, Commodore, can cannibalism is a recurrent problem in the wastes. What do you intend to do about the fact that some people are just so delicious? I mean, you're tasty, tasty, but if you know if it's wrong, then go f go after a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> it's just right there. Just get it and nom that. Put a little seasoning on it and enjoy. So uh, it sounds like your answer is to start a um, coyotes, uh, coyotes are delicious campaign. That's a good plan. A coyote cannoli, if you would. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it will decrease coyote, coyote issues with the wasteland. Do we have coyote issues? Yeah, they take our shit. <laughs> I mean, they do. Th that is why we send the children away. Yeah, during so wasteland. Eat, I eat just, the coyotes. I, one of the I reasons. Just, I just want to point out. If he's getting his shit taken by fucking coyotes, you what? How good of a job can he really do for you guys? <laughs> I've, I've seen how he camps. He he's just like spread spread out everywhere. No wonder <laughs> coyotes take his shit. Yeah, we could all say say this. If you're gonna eat somebody, eat the rich. Yeah. That's well, fair. That's fair. Your stuff. So like, if coyotes can do it and I can do it, like you're fucked. I feel like the rich really like. I really feel like they would probably taste better because they can afford to eat like at the top right? of like what you could possibly oh, eat. Oh yeah, 
It's kind of like grass-fed beef, right? It just tastes right. better because it's better it's food. It's like eating a steak without having the sauce, and you don't need the sauce. Oh, man. Someone needs to do a test on this. No, wait. Not in the real world. But someone needs to do a test on this. Like, <laughs> I totally do, have it. Do healthy people taste better? Or is it kind of like prime steak where the fattier the steak, the better it tastes? I don't know. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Trial and error? Hey, hey there, there are big, rich people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Zero knows. Oh, yeah. That is the thing. When you get really rich, you can either get like really unhealthily yeah. large or you can be like super healthy and, and there's not a and, lot in between. And then you just got your people with, you know, their genetics don't like them. Yeah. So, so I'm hearing that you guys are pro cannibalism and that sounds like a bad platform to stand on. Um, so that's, that's the smear campaign I am now running. Uh, I love that. Is that <laughs> you guys are cannibals. <laughs> but emissary well, says no. I yeah. just want to point out, emissary, that if we're cannibals and you're a human, the, my solution is solved because I'll just eat you and you won't be a can you won't be an I mean, opponent yeah. anymore. Win win. But you know yeah. exactly how much malort I've drank. So oh, then like, that's I perfect for me. That good. It'll burn off in the fire. <laughs> All um, great points. The economy of cannibalism does not really work for me as I do run a very labor based sort of trade capitalism. And I don't love when people eat my employees. So even your own employees. Don't. I mean, especially then, then they're both in trouble. And also they have to do twice the job and they better do it twice as good too. Cause now I'm cranky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, as She's host terrifying. of the show, as host of the show and the founder of the Dead Raider Jerky Company, I do have to say that in some cases, cannibalism is a 100 percent necessity. It is a 100. It is a necessity. Yeah. And they're delicious. They, they are. I'm just saying don't eat my employees. OK. Or my customers. Well, as long as they're not raiders, they're safe from me. Um, but that gives me the opportunity to play you my brand new Dead Raider Jerky Company jingle, which I'm going to do right now. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, we got something to celebrate. The Dead Raider Jerky Company is open for business. Well, this wasteland sure was getting bad. It was the worst damn years we ever had. Cause them raiders wouldn't leave us alone. Ain't it true? They'd come on in, shooting guns and take all we had as we'd turn and run. So we all decided that they'd have to go. Well, what do we do? So we formed the Dead Raider Jerky Company right. to replace all their demands with a new supply of meat. Fire up it drill. might be a taboo, but at least we get to it. That's right, we're the Dead Raider Jerky Company. Now y'all let us know if you're having any trouble with raiders in your neighborhood. Because our grills are hot and we're ready to smoke them. Low and slow. Well, a dressed up scarecrow served as bait. We caught them all outside the gate with a giant net that we lit on fire. And before they'd even realize that batch was smoked and tenderized, consider us your headhunters for hire. And we're cheap. Too. We're called the Dead Raider Jerky Company. We replaced all their demands with a new supply of meat. It's better than so you just think. give us a try for your next Sunday treat. That's right, we're the Dead Raider Jerky Company. Call up the Dead Raider Jerky Company and we'll be there faster than a jackrabbit running from a nuclear shockwave. Plus, we're going to fill up your dry storage. Well, now there's less of them around because we sell them thin sliced by the pound at a little salt and our problem's cured. That's a pun. Slow cooked under the desert sun. We got a perfect flavor for everyone. So come on down and help us spread the word. Shoot, we're throwing a sale. Those bandits were getting pretty wild. Now they come in spicy and mild. Grab a dead raider sack today. It won't cost you an arm or a leg. But you might get one. So we form the <laughs> Dead Raider.
Jerky company to replace all their demands with a new supply. They meat. ate all our food. It might We're just be a it taboo, but at least we get to eat that right where the dead raider. Jerky company, <laughs> all right, we're the dead raider. Oh, it's so good. Jerky company, yum, 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 all yum, yum. right, we're the dead raider. Jerky company. Fuck it. Let's eat the bastards. Yeah. 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 And we're <laughs> and we're back. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed my little jingle there. Uh, we've got a That's few great. more questions, and then we're gonna get to the bad mayor quick fire challenge. To yes. find out who's going to be your baddest nightmare, we are getting really close. I have and it a is my favorite part. Yeah, I fire what you, you got. Because you got me thinking. This is the apocalypse <laughs> po post uh, cat lip balm. Does that protect from moonbeam? Maybe people should think oh. about that. Oh, you're are you trying burn, to help me harm some goods? Yeah, I am going to I mean, have... I loved mine that I got, honestly. Yay. So. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm going to have uh, six flavors of Eli's Cat Oil Lip Balm available for sale at Wasteland. Thank you. It'll be at, yes. on sale at the Dukes of the Nuke, the Apocalypse Post store in the Dukes of the Nuke camp. I'll um, be there. I think it's like three of them, any three of them for 10 or something like that. Yeah. Fair. I think that's what we yeah. got. Something like that. It, Maybe it was 12. But, I don't, I don't yeah, fucking know, but it's good. No, I think, it was a good yeah, deal. I think, I think you got that three pack because I was doing a yes. four for one and three for 10 or something like that. But yeah, they're actually really great. They're made with like shea butter and all sorts of really good stuff. They're not Vaseline. Cause yeah, they're awesome. There's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> right. And they, so they might feel good other places too. I would, <laughs> I would want to say, but you know. <laughs> Well, it's funny you mention that because um, my partner just, actually actually uses it on her hands. Like if her knuckles get dry, she just rub it a little, little on That's her. exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, I thought that might be what you were talking about. I thought, uh, thought. The outside of the hands. The, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it has the viscosity to yeah, do what you're works. talking about. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I am not actually endorsing that move. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, all right. Before we dig a hole any deeper on that, Emissary, I got a question for you. Uh, and once again, I lost who, who asked this one. But gunfights in and around Wasteland City are frequent. As Nightmare, how would you force people to keep explosions to before quiet? No, before quiet hours? Oh, yeah, before quiet hours so we can all get some sleep. Basically, how do we make sure that all this night shenanigans and explosions is happening during the day? So that's, that's a really simple question. I would focus all of those explosions on me, um, therefore keeping it in a centralized location. And that can be, you know, if you want me to go away from your camp, it's really easy. Um, the Dukes have perfected this, this method of, of <laughs> running me away from their camp. Uh, so really just follow their example, um, and then the explosions will go further away. That's a good move. Any rebuttals? Anyone have a, another solution for uh, yes. keeping the explosions to the daytime? So what we do is there's a interesting route that I can show you that goes behind the, the main stage. So when they're doing sound on the main stage, do it then, and it'll bleed with the noise of the stage. No one will notice. <laughs> so we're just going to disguise the explosions behind the rock bands? Yeah, it, it, like... Gunfire and guitars? Let's do it. Well, I mean, well, some the of the bands that play up there do just sound like place. noise, so you could be onto something. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> well, my only problem is that the rad stag is going to be like pretty close there, so we don't want to blow that place up. Um, so and it seems too close to there for my liking. That's a really good point. <laughs> We, we don't we don't want to blow up any of the useful bars. That's true. Yeah, there's way too much Malort in there. That place would go up in an instant. I would say that if you've got time to explode things at night, you have clearly not thoroughly explored the Wasteland nightlife parties happening. I think <laughs> maybe you're just not focusing your energies on the important mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, so and entice see, gonna... the uh, would-be explosioners with uh, some more entertainment. Distract I mean, them, if you would. Yeah. Okay. See, see, I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow that up with, uh, if you don't like that shit, get your ass to fucking Silent, uh, Silent Hill or oh, not Silent yeah. Hill. Silent Death. Silent, Silent, Silent Death. Death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I am all about more pre-approved fire at night. However, the source is. <laughs> so basically, right. to the, the place crew. where there's no People's... sound and make sound. 
No, 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 no. The people who don't want the sound, get your ass to the place where there's no sound. And, yes. uh, you know, more fire. And Tortuga yeah. Trading Company will have plenty of earplugs available for barter. I have a feeling and, and that... And amazing um, fucking coloring books. Thank you. I have a feeling Rabbit Asylum... I really Asylum, want one. I need to get one. I have a feeling Rabbit Asylum might be behind some of these explosions that you're hearing out there. So he could be a little biased about this. That's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Just a All right. My next question comes from Trail Boss again. Uh, for Zero, what are your thoughts on improving the rights of puppets? This has actually been a big issue, so... Hit me with your best well, shot. Well, I'm going to hit you with some, with some double world stuff. One, my favorite movie, or my favorite comedy movie of all time, I think, is probably uh, The Happy Time Murders. Love it. Oh, yes. good choice. Love good it. Choice. Um, I think puppets are people. Uh, they all <laughs> they bring us all joy. Why the fuck shouldn't they have full rights? They are loved around the world. I am pro-puppet right. rights. I agree. Everybody Somebody deserves to be it. happy. They're not bothering anybody. Yeah. Leave people to fuck alone. Mm. Yeah. Puppets yeah, are people. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't met Furiosa, you have to go meet Furiosa because she's awesome. And the rest of them, but you know. Also, uh, your competition, well, your running mate's competition in this uh, mayoral battle to the death. Did I mention it's to the death? <laughs> That's fine. That's usually I think the we way all we assumed. do things. Yeah, yeah we all assumed. assumed. It yeah, might not yeah. be to the death, but I think more things should be like to the death. Like, I've, like yeah, uh, been, my my favorite to the death has been pie eating to the death. That's always good. Oh, always. that's good. Yeah, yeah everyone yeah. eats till you die. But I like to add. I like to add to what Zero said. Yes, I am pro puppet. And has he mentioned Happy Trail murders? Uh, happy I like time. To add, happy time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I was thinking Happy Fallout for time. some reason. It's all um, good. <laughs> but no, there goes to even a better uh, franchise that I'm a big fan of is uh, Greg the Bunny. And since we're not, uh, I'm pretty pro puppet, we don't use things like the S word. If you know, you know. And we don't even do other things that would uh, cliche things puppets do. Oh, I know what it is. I know what you mean by the S word. Does it rhyme with... S of it me. No, it rhymes with rock. Does it's a different word than I thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, what's wrong with I'm Can yeah, I say it's, it? It's fine. You're, 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 I can say it. What's wrong? What's, yeah. You can say blue. With, what's wrong with sock? Puppets. But what's wrong with sock? They're, they're not Yeah, what's they're puppets. Are they not they're real not puppets? Talk. Are they real puppets? No, oh, yeah, no, is a, no. Is a sock Just puppet because not they a real come puppet? from a lower it, class it, it, does not mean that they're not puppets. It, it, is, a, is, it is a bad slur. And if you watch Greg the Bunny, you'll learn oh, on an episode of why okay. it's a bad okay. thing to say. Gotcha. Well, I thought it was like know, bad luck or something. I'm very yeah. pro puppet, and I support any puppet who wants to do things in the wasteland, who wants to run against me, run with me. I'm for it. So, um, all right. So on, on the top of the puppet totem pole, and I don't mean to be classist here, but let's classify some puppets because they're like the full body puppets from like the Lion King on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I would say that is kind of top tier, right? Shows were great. Oh, yeah. And then you kind of work your way down to like, you know, Sesame Street, Jim Henson ish. Oh, yeah. And then are we talking like like sock puppets right around? Meh. And then uh, would it be like finger puppets or stick puppets next? Uh mm -hmm. Maybe uh, maybe finger would, puppets because I would they still say move. Uh, silhouette ones. Yeah. <laughs> shadow puppets. Yeah. Shadow yeah, puppets. Yeah, shadow, shadow puppets. puppets. We've got, yeah. shadow puppets. Yeah. We've got yeah. string like marionettes. Marionette. Oh, there's so many. If you play your cards right, you can make someone else into a puppet. That is true. Well, and hopefully shrinks, we don't see that yeah. during this election. But again, we don't kink shame. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually I'm really absolutely darling fucking just head down no <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely fucking lutely darling definitely has the the best face palm out of all of us here <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've been practicing all night guys you're doing great yeah, you're doing yeah great. you've been, well, you've been putting up with some uh, on the ready. real shenanigans here <laughs> all right here we go let's keep going actually this one's for you absolutely darling um 
Oh, I got I got another juicy one for you. How would you work to show that Wasteland is for everyone? And that comes from Odd Wastelander. First off, is Wasteland for everyone? Yeah. Mm. No. Whoa, emissary, no. emissary. No. Wait for it. Absolutely, <laughs> darling. So, um, I would say that Wasteland is for everyone who thinks that Wasteland is for everyone, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's really circular, but it works really well because I have definitely met plenty of people in the Wastes who think that their version of Wasteland is the correct way or that their their Wasteland experience is the only way to do it. And I think that like that tent city versus theme zone concept is really one of those things where, you know, people who, who think the theme zone is a better version of Wasteland or is the correct version of Wasteland. And if you're in tent city, you're supposed to be aiming for the theme zone. And I think that's... That's just a false dichotomy. Um, and I do, I have now heard some like lore stories that sort of answer why that happened or maybe how that happened for some people. Um, but I would say that really breaking down the, uh, the conception that we have that there is a classist or elitist structure at Wasteland. There is no good, there is no bad. We're all just out here to tell our stories. So if you have to be the winner in your stories, or if your story has to be the one that gets told at the detriment of other people's, Wasteland is not for you. Go home. Yeah, agree. Yeah. I like that, well done. Uh, anyone wanna rebut or I add to that rebuttal. zero? Yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna take this more to a real world situation. Wasteland is not for everyone. Um, there are people I know that can talk with, you know, be, uh, be, be real charming and blah, 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 and like to party and like a lot of things that Wasteland is, but their heart is not always in the right place and may carry hate for certain types of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are, I do not invite Ooh. everybody to Wasteland. I want to keep Wasteland good. So I went a little bit different with that one, but, but no. that was kind of important to me. I, 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 yeah. I, I do appreciate that. And yeah, we've had, we've had a few characters show up that it's probably not the right place for them. So I see where you're coming from with that. And it's, it, you're not wrong. Although I do hope that those people can um, have a change of heart at some point. Yes. If that yeah. makes sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. But then they're not that people anymore. Ex yeah exactly oh well done well done uh commodore what you got yeah so basically yeah i pretty much on 100 percent was zero saying basically my saying is wasteland is not for everybody it's for people to feel safe <clears throat> to be themselves yeah and i've heard from even um, puppets from a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> even puppets should feel safe i've heard from a lot of people um uh, especially um you know people that are uh, neurodivergent um, a lot of women don't feel safe in a lot of um, you know large party situations um, but I've heard over and over again that Wasteland is one of the most accepting safest places you can be and um, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud as a Wastelander for that yeah same yeah, like, yeah. it's yes. to the point where like if you see someone who's like with zero clothing you're not gonna be like oh you're like hell yeah no, you no, do you. no, no, no. If you see someone with zero clothing, you bring me my shit back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zero clothing. I knew that was coming. Like, I, I knew it from the second that came out of Commodore's mouth. No, if you have I zero clothing, just run. Run real fast. Yeah, run, yeah, run real fast. Because he's, he's going to be right behind you. Yeah, his, Give me enough yeah. caps. I'll to look the other way. Yeah, his, his, oh his lungs don't hold up as well. He's not, you know, he's really bad at cardio. Like all that, all those years of drinking and smoking just shocked him. So if you run fast enough, he can't catch you. I love it. All right, guys, I've got one more question. This one's going to be for everyone, and I'm looking for a one word answer. Um, I believe this is from Odd as well. But vengeance is a dish served best served cold. What's the best side dish for it? Uh, zero. Blood. Blood goes with vengeance. Emissary. Deviled eggs. I missed it. Say it again. Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs with your vengeance. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. Absolutely, fucking lutely darling. What goes best with with vengeance? Righteous or unrighteous, unrighteous indignation. I like the righteous rice with your... No, sorry. Yeah. Righteous uh, or unrighteous. Rice. 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 Righteous indignation. 
I or like that you're unrighteous. Keep... You don't have to be right for it to be vengeance. It can white be white rice or brown rice is my question. Ooh, definitely white rice. Yeah. White righteous <laughs> vengeance. Yeah, I didn't actually say rice. Though. I know you didn't. No. I just. No, no, just but I guess like no, me, me too. Me too. I... Don't worry. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right, Commodore. What goes? What served best with vengeance? Passion. Oh. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Well done. I got it. This yeah. was fun. Yeah. That was fun. I, I don't know what I was expecting for that question, but I got that and more. Good. <laughs> All good. right. All right. Themes doing music. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Uh, it's time for the Bad Mayor Quick Fire Challenge. And the way this is going to work is it's a giant game of Never Have I Ever. Um, and basically, I'm going to read off a bunch of things that would make a evilish bad mayor. Um, and. You guys will start with five fingers up in the air so we can see them. Emissary, you too, but you might have to call it out since we're recording you separate. Uh, Just five, just five. Um, And if you answer yes to one, you're going to drop a finger. So whoever runs out of fingers first, you're the evilest, baddest mayor. And whoever survives the longest is our uh, good mayor. So we're going to find out which side of the spectrum you guys land on. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. All right. First off, as nightmares, I've got a couple of uh, softballs for you. Are you a morning person? If it's yes, drop a finger. Oh, oh, no. I have so fucking lootly, darling. I was not expecting that. I stay uh, awake Emiss- till 4 a.m. and I'm up by 6 a.m. Holy crap. Emissary, you still got five fingers? I've, I've still got five fingers because I wake up at like 1 p.m. All right. All the guys have five. Abso fucking lootly, darling, is down to four. All right. Uh, next question. Who's better, Batman or Superman? And if you thought Superman, put a finger down. Whoa. No terrible nightmare. Abso fucking lootly, darling, no. dropping another finger. Batman Batman's is obviously rich. the superhero of the night. Batman Superman, is just rich. Okay. Yeah. S- Superman yeah. fights in the day. Sure. Sure. All but I'm saying, he fights faster, from further, stronger. Wait, have you seen so lasers. Did you just, you just change, your mind? Yeah. Did you just change like, your mind and go to Superman? No, I put it down. You just didn't notice. Yeah. Oh, you were so, so like, sneaky. So like Batman, like he may may be rich, but like he's also like extremely smart. Like that's not something you can just buy with money. I'm, I'm and, just. Yeah. I'm sorry. Knowing the square root of pi. Has never fucking like beat anybody in a fight. <laughs> he's, he's super yeah, rich. Yeah, that means you get four right. kryptonite. Yeah, fine, yeah, I got four. Yeah. Oh wait, so Emissary, you're down by one too? Yeah, I just I just put one down. He they made a good point. All right, Commodore. <laughs> here's the thing. Remember when I told you you lost a, a, a I was putting an X next to your name. You just earned it back, my friend, as the only one who's going to take Batman as a nightmare. All right, moving on. Um, you didn't say you believe- as a nightmare. No, he's not gonna be the nightmare. You didn't. What? Was, did you say for my nightmare? I thought you yeah. said just pick Superman versus Batman, like for a fight. I did. Yeah. But obviously, a nightmare well, should prefer. That's different than a being a fight. superhero. See, so you didn't he's make the that very clear. The right, dark knight. Right. I can go with that for for a mayorship. Yes, but I thought you were talking about like who's gonna fuck up who. Oh no, no, it was for nightmare. You know what? Yeah, Never okay. mind. We're moving on. If, we're just yeah, but, like if it's for Nightmare, I'm putting nightmare it back up because yeah. he's the Dark yeah. Knight. Oh, yeah, so, okay, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm back putting it back up. up. I thought we were talking about fisticuffs. All right, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You put your finger back up. I'm going to let you keep it just because it's these were supposed to be softballs. Emissary, where are you at right now? Uh, I'm back at five. All right, you're back at five. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, fucking lootly darling. No. For, for Again, maintaining your opinion through thick and thin. Give me a finger back. Okay, but I still really like Superman. I know. Oh, no, you yeah, get, yeah. no, you get to keep Superman and I know, your finger. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm not yeah, getting Yeah, but, I just but, don't think you, that question was clear, and that was that was a trap. That was a media trap. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do you believe that the nighttime is the wrong time? If you believe the nighttime is the wrong time, drop a finger. No. I'm going to assume, night Emissary, you kept time. it up. Yeah, I What's that? that right? Oh, no. All right, great. the best time. That nighttime yeah. is the right time. I forget what movie that's from, but it was from some culty thing. All right. <laughs> Drop a finger if you have ever fallen asleep while on third watch. That's the overnight watch. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> emissary. I don't know um, if a nightmare can fall asleep. Well, no. Like, it was, it was like, I, I can't stay up for 36 hours and then stay up for another 12. Like, come on. <laughs> You're a nightmare, right. everybody. 
Did All we right, have guys. to be like on guard for the watch or just like? Oh yeah, your job has okay, to be yeah. that you were on well, guard. Well, no, oh, like, I, I'm never I'm, guarding well, things. No. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So like, if if I have to sit there, then no, like yeah, I'm gonna fall asleep. That's boring. I guess, but if I'm out, like seeing the town, doing things, like partying, You're like too yeah, much, I'll stay too up. much explaining here, emissary. Are you if, up or down? I uh, he's down. I'm, I well, yeah. If I'm not doing anything, but you're cute, yeah, Curly, If that counts, yeah. Yeah, he's fine. down. Yeah, that counts. I'm down. I'm at four. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna speed these up here, guys. <laughs> no explaining. This is the this is the quick fire round. All well, right. Well, sorry. All right. Drop I a wouldn't. finger. Drop a finger if you don't party medium on Saturday night. Mm, Absolutely, fucking yeah. Lily Darling is down minus, to three again. Minus, minus down. I'm I'm matching three. M Emissary is also down. Back to three. All right. Like four Wait, how does that make you a bad mayor? I'm at four. Drop. drop oh, Commodore is down to four and zero is at five. Uh, put a finger down if you have an easy up in your camp. Easy up are those cheap shaded structures that you can get at Walmart for like 60 bucks and they always blow away. So I barely don't have bother. what could be considered a Every camp, year you so. got to help somebody catch one. <laughs> yep. Emissary, where are you at? I, I'm at three because I don't have like I barely have what would be considered a camp in the in the sense of that. It's, okay, we're going with three. A patch so, of dirt. So, so we got three. emissary yeah. three, <laughs> darling three, Commodore four, zero, still rocking five. Uh put a finger down if you have ever tasted Porto chicken. Uh, <laughs> all right. Put I've a finger it. down. What's that? I've seen it. I would taste put a, it. Does put it count? Does it does count, count if you took the chicken in with you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it counts. Did you did you bring chicken into? Are you Porto chicken guy? Was that you? And you were too. No, 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 no. I wish I was the okay. Porto chicken guy that left the chicken in the fucking Porto. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, put a finger down if you have ever missed an attack show. Yeah, put a finger down. Emissary's down by one. Darling is down by one. one. Zero is down by one. Watch. Commodore stands strong at four. So we've got two to two to four to four. I um, just didn't realize it was on. Somebody told me the wrong fucking night. <laughs> All right. Put a finger down if you have lost a fight in the th Thunderdome. Now, if you know what the Thunderdome is, it is a miniature Thunderdome where you thumb wrestle in there. And uh, I beat Mongo once, which was really, really fun. I, I, you beat Mongo. I was wow. very tricky. My my thumb swung up to the side of the cage, and then I swooped down and got him where he wasn't expecting. Yeah, I was going to say, how really that? <laughs> so, Emissary, give me your count. I, I have one. I had put down my thumb for this one. Did you lose in the Thunderdome? I lose at everything. What the? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just First excited that you, that, that, you, that you actually played in it. I, I play in everything. I don't <laughs> win at anything, but I play. <laughs> All right, what could be the last question for Emissary? Have you ever tasted the regret at the Schofields Drifters Bar? Yeah. Commodore drops oh. one. Um, emissary? I'm down. Make, Are you out? So, yeah, I'm out. So it kind of makes out. sense, though, um, because I am competing in the most villainous in the wasteland competition as well. Um, with, as the I think you probably get a good member. shot based on this. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm already the work, the bad mayor. So like, yeah, it makes sense. All right. So I wish one of our the drifters were here. I don't know what drink. Uh, I go oh, with the you, Bloody Mary most of the time. For, you would for know because you would have spun the wheel or actually selected regret off of their off of their um, emotions oh. board. Mm -hmm. no. All right. So. Uh, tally for those who aren't watching the video. Zero has four. Commodore has three. Absolutely fucking lutely darling is down to two. And Emissary is out. He is our baddest mayor out of the group here. But let's find out how the rest of you guys are going to fall. All right. Uh, next one. Um, put a finger down if you have ever performed a dirt angel. <laughs> oh, absolutely fucking lutely's down. And Zero's down. Commodore has got three remaining. How have you not done a fucking dirt angel? Come on. Because I don't flap my arms. I just go <laughs> place first and call it a day. You just lay down. You just I just lay down. You puke in the face of tradition. I love tradition. That negative one. All right. Uh, this one might be slightly targeted. Have you put a finger down if you have ever 
blamed a member of staff for making your camp a little too small and had her come over to measure it, and it turned out it was the right size That's all along. That's a setup! That's a setup, you fucking... Oh, yeah. Okay. I love that I made that that question Thank just you. specific Very enough specific. Yeah. to get you zero. <laughs> oh God! All right, well, uh, here here's another one to make up for it. Have you ever filed for divorce with someone on this show while demanding a majority of their stuff as settlement? Put a <laughs> in <there>. Oh way! <laughs> I'm having my lawyer darling. call your lawyer. Yeah. Uh, oh it, no! It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Um, <laughs> It, it's very appropriate that Absolutely fucking lootly darling uh, comes in second for the Bad Mayor Quickfire Challenge because I'm pretty darn sure that your running mate was the baddest of the day mayors when we did uh, it. It's coming together. Yeah. yeah. I, I really yeah, thought I was, was going to be the first one out on this. I know, right? <laughs> no, I had um, absolute 100% faith in Emissary. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, there was uh, there was no chance anyone else was was zero this, chance. So I, I was assuming bad I, mayor. I, I thought he was going to be like, no, did you like, kidnap I'm, people? Have you started wars? Have you? No, those are good <laughs> things. That's helpful. Yeah, it's fun. Like, it, it's well, fun. No, like who 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 here thinks like I consider this a win on my part that I yeah I, I agree. Was the first one out like it was a win. Take take it. I'm yeah, you did great. Say it was a win. And it does show that you like to try things, even if you're bad at them. Yeah, bad a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that means right. you've done a lot of stuff, which a lot uh, of people uh, haven't. Here we go. Here's the great equalizer to make sure that there are three remaining. I'll have a pointed question. Are you a co-host on a quote-unquote rival podcast? Oh, you son Drop of a, a finger. Bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it was to come up with two rounds of this game it it's really <laughs> tough to figure out like what lorish stuff makes sense for this uh plus i need a lot because it actually took way more than i expected last time i thought i was gonna go through half the list but it was almost the whole thing mm. all right next question and we're again we're down to zero and the commodore who both have two um have you been a member of more than two tribes drop a finger oh uh, i'm negative two yeah, if in case you were wondering, emissary, that one was for you. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm negative two. All right, put a finger <laughs> down if you have ever snuck away during teardown. Oh, oh shit! Negative three. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, 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 what, what, Commodore? What, what was that? Putting the pinky down and bringing it back up thing a second. Were you thinking about that? it? Because I, I wasn't hearing the question fully, and then he was like, "Oh, from a teardown." Where did you, where no, did you no, sneak the, away two, from? The tribes. I thought during the tribes. Okay. Oh, during the more than two tribes? No, I was just scratching. Oh, okay. 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 Just, just a little itch. Just, just a little itchy, itchy trigger finger there? Cheater. Dirty right cheater. Right. Cheater. No, cheater. Well, shoot. Um, uh, I only have one more question, so both of you drop a finger just for the hell of it. Okay. You're down to one. And I see what I see what you guys are doing. Come on. <laughs> can you do it? Come on. Two. Come on. Yeah. Do you have the control? Down to one. Down to one. Commodore you can't do it. Pinky. Can't Commodore count. down to one. What's Commodore. the question? Down to one. Better, Down to one. Better count and skills here. There you go. <laughs> I, had to, All right. I had to manually do it. All right, last <laughs> question, uh, but we can't end in the tie. So then, um, absolutely fucking lootly darling, I'll have you ask the next one if, if we need another one. So start okay. thinking. All right. Uh, lower a finger if you have ever been the last one there when Uncle Zeke's closed. Because Uncle Zeke's kind of famously is one of the last camps open at the end of the night. I don't know how they do it, but for some reason, they always get past that that three o'clock noise ordinance and they just keep it pumping. Um, all right. Well, we're press. down to a tie. Um, absolutely, fucking lutely darling. Did you come up with anything in that long time I offered you? Very long. Thank you. I had yeah. so much just mulling, contemplating, oh, brainstorming. Yeah, good. We had faith I've, got in you. I've got I've got the perfect one. Oh, good oh, All right. Well, Emissary's on backup. I love that. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, Emissary on backup. Yeah. Have you ever sold out a member of your tribe for less than they were worth? <laughs> That's a great question. That's a no. All right. Emissary, hit us. Uh, lower a finger if you think that Emissary is cute. Aww. Is lower a finger if you think Emissary is cute. Yeah. Yep, oh, yep, there goes Zero. He's zero cute, is he's out. cute and cuddly. He's yeah. cute and cuddly. He's so adorable. Yeah. I was going to say, Zero, you cute. were going to have to do that. that. Yeah. You already said it. We heard you. I did. Exactly. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. All right. He set me up. He set me up. <laughs> All right, so on the spectrum of good to bad mayors, Emissary 
Absolutely, fucking lootly darling Zero and Commodore coming up pretty clean at the end of this. All right, guys, that is the end of the Bad Mayor Quickfire Challenge. Thanks for playing. Um, and our last thing, I would like to offer you each one last thought. You can give me your final statement. Um, tell me a little bit more about your platform. Tell me if your mind has changed during this debate. But ultimately, tell me why Wastelanders should vote for you. Once again, absolutely fucking lootly darling, I'll have you go first. Oh, thank you. Uh, I would say that I am organized, efficient, and loud. And uh, I want to be here for all Wastelanders to get their voice out at the same or a similar volume that I am very blessed to have. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, zero, same thing. We are, me and Foster are men of action. We get shit done. We do things. We, and and look at the slums in the last couple of years also. We've done, we, we, the slums have gone up so much in the last couple of years. Imagine it, what happens if uh, we get elected. We need to, we need to see it come up in some of the slums. I agree. Mm. You might even have to change your names to, um, Ooh, I need a uh, word. Oh, um, what's the word? Uh, gentr gentrify, gentrify yeah, slums. Gentrify the <laughs> Is that slums? the right word? <laughs> No. I don't want to. I don't want to use that word. Someone help me out. What's a What's a fun little word for that? Imp improve the slums. Renovate the slums. the slums. Red light district, but it could be like red, like the slims. The slims. The slims. It's a little cleaner. It's a little thinner. All right. If we were to renovate the slums, what are we calling it? Uh, why can't we just leave it the slums it. and, and, and re redefine what slums are? We, we could do what every city in American history has ever done and turn the slums so into we, the arts district. There so, you yeah, go. So we, you know how, I, have, I have an idea. So you know how you, like, they take the name of something and then just shorten it? Um, we will call it Outside Wasteland City, so a wacko. Outside Wasteland City. <laughs> hey, I just, I just want to point out, you weren't really far off, like... Hmm. Rabbit Asylum, we have the guitar contest and the metal lounge and all that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's ours. Uh, right right across the street, you're going to have Uncle Foster and story time, which is literature. You have, I like that. You have s sculpture and, and stuff like that down at, at Black Thumbs. Yeah, all you guys need oh. now is a coffee house that primarily uses oat milk. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we're going to have oat milk, but we are going to have a morning uh, coffee, alcohol, drink thing. Uh, oh, that's one, fun. Of, one of the days. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm a big fan of an Irish coffee, so I'm going to come visit. All right. All right. Uh, Commodore, same question. What is the last thing you want Wastelanders to know, and why should they vote for you? Bullshit. So, me? Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I help run a talk show online, let people know what's what in the wasteland and the community, be there for the community. And nighttime, I'm a DJ. I DJ all around wasteland in the night. So I bring the party. I love it. All right, Emissary. But, but that sounds like he's already working at night. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to point that out. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Do we need a nightmare who uh, has their primary focus on nightmaring? Mm. Mm. Commodore, can you handle both? Oh, I could totally handle both. I mean, can you all handle both with the side of your <laughs> like emissary doing emissary <laughs> zero kidnapping people? No, but like, so what I'm Darling, doing is already what the job. nightmare does. So like, I <laughs> I'm real good at multitasking. Yeah, kidnapping is right. my daytime job. Um, yeah. All right, so, emissary. Multitasking. You, you, it can be done. Perfect. <laughs> All right, emissary. You have the floor. Why should Wastelanders vote for you? So, like, uh, pretty much like what absolutely fucking darling said. Um, except for the whole organized thing, like I'm not not that. Um, but I am loud. So got that going for me. But uh, I'm really really about um, including people, new people especially, into wasteland things, um, showing them around, involving them in shenanigans. Um, telling them, go annoy this person, and they'll probably involve you in something. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I really like that doing that normally, so this is just an extension of that. That's fantastic. All right, guys, well, you've heard from our four uh, primary nightmare candidates. Um, I think 
any of these fine wastelanders would be a wonderful choice to help you guys uh, figure out lore, become more involved, and um, probably cause some shenanigans along the way. Let me know the in the comments. Let me know in the comments who you think won today's debate and what ridiculous issues these candidates should be working on for Wasteland City 2023. And from what I understand, your candidacy, I'm sorry, your your um uh, your time in charge, your tenure. That's not even your term. There it is. Your term is going to be two years. So it sounds like we're going to do um, mayors. Uh, every two years and sheriffs every two years, uh, which actually, years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that That's that sounds taller. like a great idea. Plus, it gives you guys some chance to rule since you won't be elected until what Saturday. You won't even know. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's a really cool system and it's something kind of fun and we can concentrate on one election a year because it's more than enough. My God, this is a lot of work, isn't it, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm not even worth I'm it. Not though. Even, I mean, I'm, I haven't done anything. This is the first thing I've done. So, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm fresh. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Emissary, your laissez faire nightmare. <laughs> thank, thank you. Yeah, oh. uh, the nightmare. Which did you mean, nightmare or nightmare? Um, both. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm both. The answer is yes. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for the friendly competition. This was a lot of fun. And thank you thank for you hosting this yeah. event. This this was really fun. Oh, my pleasure. Really yeah, fun. I loved it. And like I said, this is uh, kind of me diving the deepest into lore I've ever done, and I'm having a ball doing it. Um, it's just really fun to um, be reaching out to different tribes and pitching storylines and, um, you know, kind of figuring out, you know, are we going to be friendly? Are we going to fight? Because when it comes to Wasteland, some of the some of your best friends are the ones that you fight with or, or are your enemies. Right. Yeah. Because it's. It's more fun to have some kind of tete-a-tete than it is to just be like, we're, al- we're allied, you know, um, because then you have something to talk about and a reason to point guns at each other. Who needs reasons? Yeah. Who needs guns? <laughs> we all need who, guns. Who needs Jeez. friends? That's yeah, right. I need friends. I need, I, the only guns I have are my finger guns. Yeah. Perfect. All right, oh, guys, there was a ammo wait, question wait, and wait, I was... I do have a gun. I do have a gun. The Dukes gave it to me. Uh, it's called Emissary's Last Resort. Uh, they originally gave me one bullet to just <laughs> use on myself, but I convinced them to give me two because I was definitely going to miss the first time. Oh, oh wow. God. That's pretty funny. See, you are funny. Thank you. I try. And also, um, speaking of which, I understand you're hosting a, a roast this year at the Skullduggers. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So we are doing a roast of uh, the Wasteland Magician Sand Demon. Uh, really be a good time um i have a lot of really just just bad jokes lined up um he's told me some of his and they are just just awful just oh that great. sounds awesome just it's gonna be a good time yeah. I, hope he talk, I hope he doesn't talk too much during it oh he's talking <laughs> so much it's gonna be so weird the uh, wasteland roasts are some of my favorite things they can be like really funny and they can also be com- complete bombs and either way they're amazing yeah mm-hmm. um, I, and actually since we're on it uh, why don't you guys pitch some of your stuff so tell me what you got going on uh absolutely darling it looks like you were coming in for one so let me know oh well, i have lots of things going on so i don't really know which one you're talking about uh but the mm-hmm. newest one this year is feral child kindergarten um which if you're not a first year or if, you're, if this isn't your first year in the waste, you are welcome to come audit the course. Uh, and it will include the basics of bartering, uh, the philosophy of bartering, the basics of lore, how to tell your story, how to tell other people's story with your story, uh, a little bit on consent and being a good wastelander. Um, and then we're also doing some field trips uh, to specific camps <laughs> that have like best quest jumping off um and then if at the end we're also then having a job board kind of like the sims where you get three and you get to choose one to go on your first quest yeah. that's so fantastic can, what a great gonna, idea um, are you going to use these people to be your moving crew to get your stuff from uh the duke's camp to your camp whoa uh, whoa, hey, whoa, emissary, whoa emissary hey he's right first here, off so. first off the uh, litigations are ongoing uh and my lawyer <laughs> has uh has full confidence that we will be winning this you also married your lawyer though so like, yeah mm. and mm. also i call her sister wife now so maybe <laughs> maybe like wow. <laughs> well here's the thing i've got a legitimate wife uh with paperwork uh, yeah. which uh, it seems like you you have no no paperwork oh i do i have a marriage certificate actually it's in the the tortuga trading company ledger yeah you have what yeah the baron signed it you'll remember right okay 
No, I, I don't. But um, I, I would like to <laughs> I mean, drink uh, less. That's all I got for you. <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, if we're in Discovery, um, actually, yeah. I, d- I did say something like that to the newspaper, too. I like, know. I, I had dinner I, I with w- them. Oh, oh, so you played into my, you yes anded me. Of course I did. Um, I and then I it. also showed Sister Wife the marriage certificate. Um, oh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I have no problem with Johanna. She is an absolute sweetheart. Yeah, well, why would you waist, want? So. Well, now you'd be taking 75% of her stuff, too. I'll share with her. Yeah. God damn it. Okay. All right, yeah. I see what's going on. Um, Zero, do you have something you want to pitch for this year? Or not um, pitch, but, uh, but plug? Yeah, we've got our guitar competition again. I think it's on Saturday. Which is always a riot. It's Saturday at three. We have a we have a guitar to use. You can bring yours this year if you want to. We have it. We have all the gear. All you got to do is just show up and play. Um, right. Shooting and, prizes. Um, if should people that can barely play guitar like myself uh, bother showing up? What? You yeah sure Ooh. barely play. Stop uh-huh. lying. Um, yes, I would <laughs> love you to come actually enter. Yes, it's for everyone. Like awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's, it's not just fun. people that can like shred up and down the neck. You want people. No, uh, honestly, it's not. I it originally got named the shred competition because I was just hadn't even thought about a fucking name for the competition. I was just thinking about how to get everything right when we first made it. Yeah. In the last second, when the events thing was going on, my wife was putting it in, and she's Hmm. like, "What's the name of the competition?" Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, uh, the shred uh, shred competition. I don't even remember what I originally said, but it has like pretty much nothing to do with shredding. Like you can shred if you want to. It's okay. just been a guitar competition with some challenges. That's perfect. So, oh, nice. um, and then I, I, I can't confirm anything yet, but I heard the truce might have been broken that I, you know, finally happened last year. And uh, if so, uh, on principle alone, things are going to have to go back to war, and people looking to get involved. Uh, there's going to be a, a there, there's potentially going to be a war with the merchants again and the drifters and some other, you know what I mean? There's fantastic. Yeah. You've got yeah. some stuff going on NTF, yeah. you know what I mean? So we're, we are looking for people on every side. People want to be involved. Come hit us up. Fantastic. I love right. it. All right. Commodore, same thing. Do you have anything you want to plug for this year? So Oops. yeah, um, I got quite the uh, amount of uh, DJ gigs at night. One of them in particular, I'm actually DJing with uh, at Zero's place. Yeah, oh, nice. I forgot to sh- say that. Yeah, <laughs> basically uh, for the first time ever, I'll be DJing an all metal hard rock set, all in that genre oh, umbrella. Dang. Opening and night, kicking That's off awesome. Wasteland, nice the metal way. Nice. Oh, I like that. I'm looking forward to it already. And then, of course, we got Wasteland Talk season finale over at the Goat Head uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. Nice. And then I'll be helping out with the uh, Who Said Romance is Dead event over at Uncle Zeke's. And we'll be doing some paddling and drinking, maybe some truth or dare, some lap dances. It's going to be fun. Oh, hello. All right. Fantastic. Well, guys, um, for all you out there listening, we've got a great Wasteland coming up. And, of course, the lore is going to be off the hook this year. Oh. Oh, what? Yeah. Did you I didn't. Me? You started. No, yeah. I didn't. No, I didn't. You did. I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't you talk about that. You're right. No, you're right because I had not lined it up for you yet. So emissary, why don't you tell me your yeah, fun stuff? Nothing. Skip me. Just okay. I see how it is. Okay. It's tough because I can't see you. I mean, the people watching yeah, will yeah. be able to see you, but I can't yet. So I don't yeah, know when you're yeah. like flagging me oh, down. I've been stuff. doing some crazy stuff this entire time. Like, when I just hope your clothes are on because yeah, it's like a fifty. I, have, oh, I don't have pants on, but like, who needs pants? Um, so <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I've got the um, uh, what is it? The the roast on Saturday, of course. Um, uh-huh. But I also have the most villainous in the wasteland competition, where I thought that was Friday at one p.m., but apparently that's gotten moved because the the mayoral debate is that time now so i'll have to talk to tag about i mean they're that. kind of one in the same competition in a way yeah i guess so yeah but uh so got that um thursday night at schofield Strifters from 9 p.m to 11 p.m uh i will be um helping host a absinthe night so if you like absinthe Ooh. um you know come by schofield Strifters from 9 to 11 i will be wearing green fairy wings um, they will be forced <laughs> upon me. Um, and I'm also trying to put some on Mongo. Um, so we will see, we will see how that turns out. 
Um, nice. I think that's all I've got. But like, right. yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll probably add more stuff throughout the uh, the time. But fantastic. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. I know oh, absolutely fucking lutely darling had to take off. She had some real world business to take care of. But um, so. her and all you fellas, thank you so much for joining. This was a lot of, of fun. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having night, us guys. here. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, it thank you all for zero listening. Win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Really appreciate you uh, tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you can. Thank you to all my patrons. And by the way, all patrons are going to be getting a Snap Wrap koozie delivered to them at Wasteland. You can sign up before September 15th at patreon.com slash the apocalypse post. And I will have one in the WCC mail coming your way. Of course, if you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend because that's one of the best ways for the show to get out there and get known and get discovered by people. And if you hated it, share it with your enemies along with a teapot terrorist. I'll see you next time, survivors. Stay alive. And days and days and days and days.